As we move on to Unit 2, Section 6, we're going to be refining our understanding of Lewis electron dot diagrams. So we're going to do a few more examples here. Here we have sulfur dioxide, and we're going to start with, of course, sulfur as our central atom, and we have two atoms of oxygen surrounding it there. So let's start with the outside and work our way in. So each oxygen needs to have six dots brought in for that because you know, oxygen's in group 16. So six dots for this one and six dots for that one. And if, as we look at the table for sulfur, it's going to have six dots as well. So six dots for the sulfur. Now we ask ourselves, does everything have eight? And of course, as we look at this, the answer is no, because the oxygens do seem to have eight if you include the the shared pairs in the middle here, but sulfur only has six. So we're going to have to move two of these uh, dots from the outside into the middle. So I'll take a couple dots right from there, move them into the middle, and now everything has eight, as we can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the fact that we have two shared pairs right here. So that's a double bond. And we have one shared pair here, so that's a single bond. And then we have one unshared pair or one lone pair up here on top of the sulfur. So when I draw the final product, it's going to look something like this. Now you might look at that and wonder, well, what about if we had this question on a test or a quiz or something, and instead of drawing this structure, you drew a diagram that looked like this. Now, is that okay? It's basically just the mirror image, isn't it? Well, yes, that is okay. You could have taken, for example, one of the uh, unshared pairs from the other side and brought it in to make a double bond, and that's perfectly okay. In this case, we have more than one uh, Lewis electron dot diagram that is correct and accurately uh, reflects the octet rule here. Now, we're going to call these resonance structures. Resonance structures are when you have two, or sometimes more than two, Lewis electron dot diagrams with which both represent correct structures for the molecule. So if this were on a test, uh, either of these would be acceptable. Let's try another one. Let's try the nitrate polyatomic ion. So this one's a little bit different. We'll see how we handle polyatomic ions. Once again, it starts out pretty much like the others. The nitrogen is going to be here in the middle, so I'll put nitrogen in the center. We're going to have the three oxygens surrounding it on the sides, and we'll start with the outside. So each oxygen needs to have six dots, since oxygen is in group 16. So we have six dots here, six dots, and then we have six dots for that one. The nitrogen is in group 15, so five dots from that one. So we'll bring in the five dots from that. And you might notice that we have an, an odd number. So how does that work? Well, take a look at the negative sign right there. That negative sign tells us that we're going to have to add one bonus electron in here somewhere. If it had been a negative two charge, you'd have to add in two bonus electrons somewhere, but we have one negative charge. So do you see a good place where that bonus electron can go? And of course, that's a good spot for it right there, isn't it? So that is our structure. But of course, we see that not everything has eight. So, uh, you know, this nitrogen only has six the way it stands. So I'm going to have to move in a pair. Uh, maybe this pair of electrons from the bottom can go up to the middle. And now everything has eight. So when I draw my uh, Lewis electron dot diagram, I'm going to have a shared pair here for a single bond, a shared pair here for a single bond, and two shared pairs here to make a double bond. So it's going to look like this. Whenever you draw the structure for a polyatomic ion, always put its structure in brackets with the charge out to the side, just like I've done here. That way, Anyone who's looking can see that, yes, we've added in the bonus electron, and it's not just we messed up and threw in an, an electron that wasn't really supposed to be there. So we have uh, resonance structures here as well. If you decided to maybe make the double bond over here instead of on the bottom, that would be okay. Or if you had put the double bond on the right side, that would be okay as well. So I can see at least three resonance structures here for this ion, actually. 
Now let's take a look at another way to refine our Lewis electron dot diagrams. This is something called formal charge. And the formal charge is a way of assigning a charge to every individual atom in the molecule. And if you have a neutral molecule, usually the most stable condition that you're going to have is for each atom to have a formal charge of zero. Now here's how you do this. Let's take a look at that fluorine atom right there just as an example. The way you calculate formal charge is you look at the periodic table and you see how many valence electrons that atom brings into the table. So fluorine is in group 17, so it's going to have seven valence electrons that it brings in. So we're going to put the seven there. And then we're going to subtract how many it actually has assigned to it in this structure. Now, now the way that works is every dot counts as one and every bond counts as one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and that bond counts as seven. So we subtract that value. So seven minus seven and the formal charge on the fluorine is zero. This is a neutral molecule. This is not a, an ion or anything. So zero is a good thing. You want all of these to be zero. We can try the one on the bottom. And it's basically the same. Fluorine brings seven valence electrons, as it always does. And you subtract out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven minus seven is zero. That's a good thing. The fluorine over here, it's the same. It brings in seven valence electrons. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven assigned to it. So 7 minus 7 is 0. That's good. You want to have a lot of zeros. This is one of those cases where a 0 is, is a good thing. And the nitrogen, nitrogen brings in 5 dots to the table. And how many does it have assigned to it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's also 0. Every bond counts for 1. Every dot counts for 1. So everything in this molecule is 0. That's a good thing. That tells us that this is most likely the actual structure for this molecule. The formal charge helps us to confirm that. Now, let's take a look at this structure. Now, we just drew this earlier, and we said this, this seems pretty good. It seems to follow the octet rule. Let's take a look at the formal charge for everything on here. So we'll start with the oxygen right there. So how many dots does oxygen bring to the table? Well, it brings in six, right? It's in group 16. How many does it have assigned to it? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six minus seven is not zero. That's a minus one. So that atom has a formal charge of negative one. Let's try the other oxygen, okay? Oxygen always has six valence electrons that it brings in, but how many are assigned to it in this structure? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, because every bond counts for one. So six minus six, that one is zero. So that's, that's good. But how about the sulfur in the middle? Now looking at the table, the periodic table, sulfur brings in six valence electrons. How many dots or how many electrons are assigned to it? Well, we have one, two, and then three, four, five. So six minus five is positive one. So as it turns out, even though we thought this was a good structure, uh, and you may draw this and it may be fine and acceptable, and often the College Board does accept this, they don't have any problem with this, the fact is, it's really not what happens in the real world. As it turns out, if you look this up in textbooks, there's a good chance that you'll find that this structure is uh, more likely to actually exist. And that's a little bit strange to us because it actually disobeys the octet rule. We kind of have an expanded octet here. But it's probably going to be the more stable structure because if you start looking at the formal charge, all atoms in that particular structure have a formal charge of zero. And so the formal charge is a way to help us refine some of our Lewis electron dot diagrams and make sure that they reflect what we actually see in the real world. 
Now let's take a look at a molecule that we've already drawn, carbon dioxide, and you probably know what the answer is for this already. But if you look at these two Lewis electron dot diagrams of carbon dioxide, you'll find that both of them actually obey the octet rule. Technically, this one on the left really obeys the octet rule. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this. But which of the two structures is more likely to exist? Well, formal charge is what helps us to answer the question. Because if we start with this oxygen, oxygen always brings in six dots, but how many dots are assigned to it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six minus seven gives us negative one. This carbon, carbon always brings in four dots, and how many dots are assigned to it? One, two, three, four. So it's zero. You know, every bond counts for one. And this oxygen here, oxygen always brings in six valence electrons, but it has one, two, three, four, five assigned to it. So six minus five is positive one. So that's not the ideal structure, is it? Zeros are what you want to have across the board for a neutral molecule. How about the one that we drew before? This is the one that we're more familiar with. The oxygen, you know, it brings in six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's zero. This carbon, carbon brings in four dots. One, two, three, four assigned to it. That's got the zero. Oxygen starts with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, that one has a formal charge of zero all the way across the board. So that's why this is the molecule that's more likely to exist. So a good habit to get into is to use formal charge to check your molecules and make sure that you're actually getting the structure that exists in the real world. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you learned something about formal charge and uh, resonance structures as well. And I hope to see you in the next video as we move on to uh, Unit 2, Section 7.